Yo, what's up YouTube? Today we are back again with the Pulsar X2 Wireless. I have the Founders Edition green, and as you saw in the B-roll, it looks absolutely amazing. I might be a little biased about that because green is my favorite color. And also I got the medium version since I have Gigantus hands, so if you're interested in the mini, I don't have that one. But I do hear the mini is great for fingertip grip users with smaller hands, so if that's you, definitely check that out. Anyway, in this video we are going to do a quick unboxing and then I'll get into the review, which I'll be comparing it a lot to the XM1R. But just to be clear, this is not an XM1R clone. But starting at $99 to $120 for the Founders Edition, this beats a lot of mice that are much more expensive than it. Before we get into it, I ask that you please support me by liking the video. It helps me so much getting my content out there. And if you enjoy, subscribe so that you can see my future content because I have a lot of stuff coming out. Without further ado, let's get into the X2 unboxing. All right, to be fair, I have already opened it up and used the mouse I've been testing out, but here we go. When you open the box, oh, you got the mouse just sitting on top. You got this plastic guy right here. You gotta remove that. So this actually, for me, was stuck the first time. It, like, I think it's stuck again right now. There's like glue holding it down at the bottom. Yeah, there we go. Right here, you would have the USB receiver. I have it plugged in over here, but yeah, the USB receiver goes right there. We got the box of goodies right here. USB-C cable, it's yellow. It didn't match my setup, so I didn't want to use it. I'm actually just using a Ponage USB-C cable that's going to the dongle for the Pulsar GG. Um, but yeah, there's the yellow cable it came with. It's nice and it's a braided soft cable. Came with a little user manual, a sticker, and the goodies, which is some extra skates. And the Founders Edition actually comes with glass skates. Pulsar makes super glides for all their mice and also a lot of aftermarket mice as well or third-party mice and so they just include it in the box so that's part of the reason I guess the Fender's Edition is more expensive than the base model. Plus it's one of a thousand so there's that too. All right and that's pretty much it for the unboxing. I mean it just comes with that there, the cable and the mouse. I mean that's all you really need. All right, here's the mouse. Let's go ahead and get into the review. First off, this being a wireless mouse, I think battery life is one of the most important things next to weight. Finding the perfect balance between them is key for a wireless mouse because the battery is the one thing that can add a ton of weight to the mouse. And I feel like a lot of reviewers just say something like, oh, the battery life is great. It just lasts a few days, no charge. But they don't give actual specs on what kind of battery life they got. So I decided to try and make a standard test that I'll use on every new mouse that I review. For the test, I will charge the mouse to full when I first get it or before I review it track how long I play until it dies, and then charge it fully and see how long it takes to fully charge as well. I'll do this three times and then average out all the times to get a baseline. For the X2, the Pulsar claims up to 70 hours of battery life. However, after doing this test, I was only able to get about 38 hours of gameplay. I'm not sure if it's just my copy or my settings causing me to get significantly less battery life, or just Pulsar's marketing claiming that you should get 70 hours. I play on 1600 DPI and 1000 Hz, so maybe their tests were done at 500 Hz which theoretically would take half the power giving you longer time or close to 70 hours of gameplay. Also my tests were done with motion sync on which is a feature of the 3395 sensor of this mouse. I read online that this could also hurt the battery life. Now certainly that is not bad battery life. Let's say that you play six hour gaming sessions at a time. You'd get over six sessions without having to charge the mouse. When you have to charge the mouse however it takes about 40 minutes to get to full. So after about 34 to 36 hours or about five gaming sessions of use i'd definitely throw it on the charger if you don't want it dying mid gameplay which has happened on me one of the things contributing to battery life is the sensor the mouse uses it has a pixar 3395 sensor which is a modern flawless energy efficient sensor as i mentioned earlier though i believe the motion sync feature of this sensor is hurting its battery performance motion sync syncs each sensor update with a pulling event which basically means your mouse sensor is 
is perfectly communicating with your PC. This is supposed to reduce latency and make the mouse feel smoother when tracking. However, Pulsar said their implementation may even cause a tiny bit of extra latency. Personally, when testing this mouse, I didn't notice a huge improvement in latency or smoothness from using motion sync. Having it on or off felt pretty much the same to me, and I even have a 360Hz monitor where I could potentially benefit from the better latency. However, if it's true that it is hurting battery life, then I would just leave it off since I'm not seeing any benefit from leaving it on. Other than that, just like any other modern mouse, you won't have any issues with the sensor. It should work perfect, and if it doesn't, then you have a defective copy. <laughs> Also, if you want to change anything on the mouse, you can download the software from their website. It lets you change the polling rate, DPI, turn on or off motion sync, set debounce, and even change this little light on the side to whatever color you want. Speaking of debounce, my mouse came set to 8 milliseconds, which I was able to get it down to 3 milliseconds without any double clicks on mouse 1 or 2. So if you get this mouse, definitely download the software and get that as low as you can if you care about latency. So the mouse uses KL GM 8.0s, which are rated for 80 million clicks. The main clicks feel very nice and super tactile. They have pretty much zero pre or post travel. And the same goes for the XM1R. The X2 has ever so slightly more crispy clicks, but that could also be because the mouse is newer compared to my XM1R. They also sound more direct versus the XM1Rs, which sound a little more hollow. Here's a quick sound test for you guys. So yeah, the main difference about the clicks is that the X2 has comfort grooves on the mouse one and two, while the XM1R is rounded. This is a personal preference thing, and while I hated the XM1R the first time I ever got one, I grew to love it and now I don't mind it either way. The X2 has a TTC gold encoder, while the XM1R uses a Japanese Alps encoder. Again, this is a personal preference thing, but for me, the X2's more tactile and solid feeling scroll wheel feels better in Fortnite. When I use it for resetting walls, even in general PC use, it feels better. The XM1R's scroll wheel is a little softer feeling and not so tactile. Um, however, it's much easier to click the middle mouse button on the XM1R versus the XM2, which is also more tactile when it comes to middle click, but harder to press. For me, I use this middle mouse button to ping locations in game, so I prefer an easier button to press. If these two scroll wheels had a baby, I'd have a perfect scroll wheel. On the side buttons, I do 
do prefer the X2's more crisp feeling. Uh, the X and 1R side buttons have always had a ton of pre-travel for me, and since I spam them so much in Fortnite, it doesn't provide a lot of feedback, as much as I'd like at least. The X2 has much less pre-travel, and the buttons are also smaller, making them feel like they stick out more than the X and 1R's larger side buttons. The X and 1R's front side button is flush with the body, So it's harder to feel it, and there's no gap between them like the X2. Which makes them easier to hit to me. But if the X and 1R side buttons have no pre-travel, I would enjoy the mouse much more. It's just, due to this shape, it makes them very hard to play in Fortnite and spam them as much as I need to. So Postar claims that the X2 weighs in at 56 grams, give or take a couple grams. Which, as you can see here, my unit comes in at... Not sure if you guys can see that. My unit comes in at 55 grams, which for a medium wireless mouse of this caliber is really good. I mean, my custom Air 58 here comes in at 69 grams, not intentional at all. And an XM1R with glass feet and a bit of cable comes in at 72 grams. 72, 73 grams. I do, however, have this super thin cable for the XM1R from Lethal Gaming Gear. And paired with a bungee, this mouse feels wireless, to be honest. None of these mice are bricks by any means, but the fact that the X2 is wireless and doesn't have any holes in it, yet is lighter than these other mice, is pretty awesome. Awesome. Okay, well I lied. It does have these cutouts at the bottom, which are kind of a cause for concern to me. It's very hard to tell on camera here. But there is already a bunch of dust building up on the bottom of the mouse from just a couple weeks of use. Just like any other mouse with holes, this should not hurt the mouse since the PCB is coated to prevent any damage. It's just that on this mouse, because the holes are so big, if you care about keeping it clean, you'll need to clean it often. As far as the shape, this is the part where we need to set the Pulsar apart from the X and 1R. Both of these mice are geared toward claw grip. I use a palm claw grip like this where I sort of shove the mouse all the way in the back of my palm and then bring my fingers over towards the tip. It may just be a straight up aggressive claw grip. I'm not sure what it's called. I just have very large hands and this is the best, most consistent and comfortable grip for me. So I'm going to be coming from a mindset of a palm claw user when making these comparisons. The first thing to note is that the XM1R has a wider back while the middle of the sides are very tucked in. This makes your fingers feel closer together and the hump fills your palm more than the X2. The X2 hump is a little taller and it tapers off much faster. So it feels more like a ball in your palm versus the XM1R which feels flatter and wider. Also because the hump of the X2 tapers off much faster, it's shorter than the XM1R and feels much smaller in the hand. The sides of the X2 are much flatter and and wider than the X and 1R, as in up and down height, but that allows for a safer shape from Pulsar and that can accommodate more grips than the X and 1R, which sort of guides your hand into place. As I mentioned earlier, the clicks on the X2 have comfort grooves, which if you're holding the mouse in a palm grip for some reason, then they are really nice, but for me and my grip, I don't mind either style. I will say the X2 comfort grooves, they do make the tip of the mouse feel slightly lower to the pad than the X and 1R. Lastly, the position of the scroll wheel is much further back on the X2. I used scroll wheel down in Fortnite to reset my wall, so it became apparent really fast compared to the XM1R, where the scroll wheel is really close to the front. It may be insignificant, but just that little distance could be that millisecond between you resetting your wall and living, or not resetting it and dying. Alright, and the last thing I want to cover is the build quality. Since this mouse has pretty much no holes except for the bottom, it's very sturdy. There's almost zero side flex or creaking. Now if you hold the mouse like this, and you push in a certain way and you can flex the bottom you can get it to actuate the mouse clicks the main mouse clicks but you will never do that in a game and it's never going to be a concern the xm1r is of course extremely solid having no holes at all i'm not sure if you guys can tell but i've stepped on this mouse once and it held up still going strong even with a few battle scars 
The coating of the X2, in my opinion, is much better than the XM1R. Uh, the X2 has a matte hard plastic coating, whereas on the XM1R, dark frost edition at least, it also has a matte finish, but it's like this soft touch weird finish. If you watch my streams, you know I use gloves when I play, so I can't really comment on how well the coating will hold up to sweat. But I will say the dark frost on the XM1R is a fingerprint magnet. Even with gloves on, there is still a some smudgy oily stuff that gets on it when I use it and when you try to get it off it smears around never returning to how it originally looked. It's sort of hard to pick up in camera, but in person, it's it's very apparent. With the X2, if any oil or moisture gets on it, you can just use a microfiber to wipe it clean and it comes out perfect looking every time. This may be something that only bothers me with the XM1R, but if you're a neat freak or clean freak like me, it might be something to know. In conclusion, the X2 is an amazing wireless top-notch modern mouse. It's got an amazing build and really hits every spec you could want in a wireless claw grip mouse for only 100 bucks or 120 if you could the founders edition if you play fortnite it has some of the best side buttons and really fast latency for those crispy edits that's pretty much it on the x2 if you have any questions leave them down in the comments and also tell me what mouse you main for fortnite and maybe i might try it out and make a video on it as well if you enjoy again i ask that you please like and subscribe and have a great day thanks for watching